Hello, my name is Simon Clark, and I am both a YouTuber and a climate scientist. I have a PhD in atmospheric physics from the University of Exeter, and I make videos on a variety of topics in climate physics. Now, when you make videos like that, you tend to get some quite interesting comments in the you know discussion. So I thought in this video, I could look through some of the recent comments that I've received and talk through some of the points that are being raised. How many scientists drive less and fly less knowing what they know? Secondly, your scientist, Dr. Adam, said the influence of the sun on climate is not so much. I think he needs to re-examine the data. Full disclosure, I'm no scientist. Well, thanks for making that very clear. This is in response to a video that I did with Dr. Adam Levy, Climate Adam on YouTube, you should check him out. And in that, we're talking about global cooling. And what they're asking is that the sun's influence on the climate is apparently not very much. No, um, what we were saying in that video is that the sun's influence on the climate changing is not very much because the sun's output has not changed significantly. I already know now what the comment section of this video will be. And it will be saying that we're entering into a global solar minimum and that it's sunspot activity. And I can say with absolute confidence that that is not the case. That is not a view that is held by scientists in any high esteem. As for how many scientists drive and fly less as a result of knowing what they know about climate change, uh, a great deal of them. A great many scientists that I know, for example, don't drive very much. They will actually cycle to work. They will attempt to not fly as much as possible. I try and fly as little as I possibly can. I've been vegetarian for nearly 10 years because I want to try and limit my carbon impact. In short, scientists do change their behaviors uh, as kind of practicing what they preach, I guess. Climate change is caused by climate manipulation. Yes, we've been manipulating the climate causing it to change because of carbon emissions. You might be new here. Very quick comment here. Shut down climate and in... <laughs> Shut down climate, that would be good. Shut down China and India. Problem solved. I think this is quite a common misconception that I see in my comments, that the developing world is the part of the world which is responsible for most of the emissions. And we certainly hear a lot of rhetoric around China in particular. However, the fact is that 10% of the world's population, the richest 10%, accounts for 50% of the world's emissions. And that's because our lifestyles here in the developed West are very carbon intensive compared to the lifestyles of people in, for example, China and India. That, of course, is a snapshot at the moment. That's not something which is going to be continuing into the future because both both of those countries are incredibly large, they are also developing socially and having expanding middle classes, and they are getting still bigger. There is a whole complicated argument to be had about the nature of industrialization uh, in the developing world and the fact that the West was allowed to industrialize and emit lots of carbon in doing so, but now we're saying to the developing world that no, you can't do that. And that's a complicated discussion to be had. Um, I just like to say that there are technologies available now that uh, negate the need to to uh, emit lots of carbon, in particular when looking at rural electrification in places like Africa, for example. We currently have technologies uh, based on renewables which will electrify most uh, of the people that have not yet received electricity access for very little carbon cost. And for the record, those low carbon costs are only made possible because of the investment of developing nations. China is basically the entire reason that we can have cheap, reliable uh, photovoltaics. So China is the reason that solar energy is looking as cheap and as promising as it currently does. So whether or not we want to shut down China and India, uh, I, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Who is this guy? Al Gore's brother? I see a lot of comments from this particular user. Um, for the record, no. What happened to global warming? It's climate change now, isn't it? Generally, when a hypothesis fails to accurately predict a phenomenon, it's because the hypothesis isn't good. Now you're ridiculed for questioning when questioning is supposed to be the backbone of science. Better not question climate change, lest you be guilty of heresy. <sighs> Well, to answer this user's question, uh, global warming and climate change are not the same thing. Global warming refers to the global average increase in temperatures that we uh, see when we add greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. Climate change is, if you like, the knock-on effect of trapping all that extra energy in the system. So that can result in areas being uh, hotter than the average warming, but also colder than the average warming, as well as changes in things like precipitation and uh, circulation patterns. So they're not the same thing. As for whether a hypothesis uh, fails to accurately predict a phenomenon, it's not good. It's just as well that global warming's hypothesis that radiative forcing due to anthropogenic carbon uh, increases the global average temperature, um, that's been borne out. So um, yeah, good job, basic science. By the way, uh, these videos that I make on climate change tend to get swarmed by a lot of users and bots in some cases who drop dislikes on them for basically talking about science. So if you're enjoying this video so far and you're finding it educational, then do pop it a like down there. It does make a really big difference. Someone here has just posted the ideal gas law Wikipedia. What on earth are you trying to say? You obviously don't understand full solar forcing all the solar capital cycles. I was trying to communicate. 
There are solar cycles and cycles in the Earth's orbit around the Sun which have been accounted for by climate scientists for decades. Um, if only this user was around then, maybe we could have got it done a little bit faster. After all, apparently they understand all of them. 2 millimeters per year! Wow, quick run for the hills! This is in reference to the global average change in uh, sea level. Actually, it's a fair bit more than that. It's actually, at the moment, I think more like 3.1 millimeters per year. That is the average, uh, and it's getting faster and faster. That's actually what this whole video is about. Perhaps if this uh, commenter actually watched it, they might uh, have use the right figure and grasp that concept. That obviously doesn't sound terribly scary. Um, however, you have to remember that a small change vertically, uh, and if you're talking about just a couple of centimeters of change over, uh, for example, a decade maybe, uh, by the end of the century, that's a lot of land laterally away from uh, the coastline, which is going to be flooded because, you know, a, a lot of this land is very uh, gently sloping. So a small vertical change will result in a large area of coastline lost. That's not actually the big issue here. The big issue is the fact that it raises the average level of the sea which then means that areas which are susceptible to uh, coastal flooding extend way further inland. When you get stuff like storms, uh, storm surges happening, um, then la far larger areas are going to be affected, and also areas which are densely populated. So much as it doesn't sound like very much of a change per year, first of all, it's getting faster and faster. Secondly, we're looking at the change over the whole century, which could be, in the worst case scenario, a couple of meters. And thirdly, the areas that we're talking about being affected are densely populated and could have some really catastrophic effects. So run for the hills? Not actually the worst advice you could give, maybe in a couple of decades though. I want global warming, the more the better. I want to plant coconut trees and tropical fruit in my garden. Taking this comment at face value, um, that's not really going to be your principal concerns. Uh, yes, changes in global temperature and global climate will result in different species of plants and animals migrating and being able to grow different species where you previously weren't able to do so. However, I think people are far too flippant in many cases about the potential outcomes of climate change. Obviously, this stuff is in the future. We cannot say with certainty any particular event will happen, but we think it is very likely that we will see a huge amount of forced migration as a result of climate change because of rising sea levels in places like Bangladesh that will displace tens of millions of people. You'll also see migration away from areas that become drought prone, uh, that have had their resources exhausted, or because they can't grow uh, particular crops in a region anymore. Another consequence would be the clustering of extreme events because at the moment when we get a particular extreme weather event it's often a very long time until the next extreme event. What's going to be a particularly big problem in the future is when you get one and then almost immediately another. You're already reeling from a disaster such as an extensive drought or an extensive hurricane or a heat wave as we saw in Europe relatively recently. How on earth do you respond to that disaster happening again in short order? The fact is it will put an overwhelming strain on the response to these situations. So when we talk about climate change having these impacts, yes, there is potentially some benefits to be had if you want to grow pineapples in your garden in the middle latitudes. But on the other end of the spectrum, we're dealing with some pretty heavy consequences, and I think that should be borne in mind. Well, I think that's enough for one day, looking through comments. I hope that you enjoyed this journey that we went on together. I hope that it was educational and uh, maybe even a little entertaining. Also, by the way, if you think that the videos that I make on this subject are important, if you think more people should be seeing them and I should be making more of them, then consider supporting me on Patreon. There'll be a link down there in the description. You get access to videos a day early, you get some Patreon exclusive behind the scenes type content, and um, it makes a real difference to how I can make videos. So if you think this is important, please do consider supporting. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to pop it a like. You can also subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like the ones these people have been commenting on. And if you'd like to see me do more of this kind of thing, then also let me know down in the comments and I could happily record some more videos like this one. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.